Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where an aunt tries to set up OP for an arranged marriage. About a week ago at the gas station I work at, it was snowing pretty lightly and it was real chilly out. It was definitely bundle up weather. It had just about passed the 7 o'clock mark on my 2 to 10 shift and it was already pretty dark. Contextual bits. My gas station doesn't have public restrooms. All we have is a couple of porta potties around the right of the building. Not a lot of light over there, but it's better than nothing considering we're a couple dozen miles from regular civilization. This guy and his daughter, about 5 or 6, come into the gas station and have about a 10 second look around the place before looking at me and asking if they could use our bathroom. I say, we've only got porta potties around the right of the building. What? Not even for her? The porta potties are all we've got. It's freaking freezing out there and there's hardly any light. You're really gonna make her go out there? Sir, I've already told you that we don't have anything but the porta potties. And unless you think she can hold it for a while, she's just gonna have to use it. Unbelievable! He grabs his kid's arm and goes outside to the porta potties. At this point, I'm ticked off because, one, he just tried to guilt me using his daughter, and I hate when parents use their kids like that. And two, he's dressed in a pretty snug overcoat and winter hat. She's wearing the thinnest pair of pajamas I'd ever seen. No coat, no gloves, no anything keeping her warm. They come back about five minutes later, and he's still huffing about the lack of public restrooms. Well, that was horrible. Cold and dark for a little girl. Yep. I'm being dismissive because I'd rather he just spew his nonsense and leave than try and prolong her being out in the weather like that. Finally, they both come up with their stuff and I start ringing them out. I notice how sad Quiet Child looks and I lean down before Entitled Dad knows what's going on and asks her pretty plainly. Would you like a sticker? We keep a big folder of stickers for some of our regular kids. The Quiet Kid nods, shivering. I quickly grab a couple sets of the girliest stickers I can find and walk around from my register and crouch in front of her for display. She picks a sticker, a purple cat playing with yarn. I pat it down on her shirt and they leave, entitled dad totally silent and brooding. Moral of the story, dress your kids properly and maybe you won't have to worry about them being cold and upset. Man, OP, the depressing thing about this story is that you giving that girl that sticker might be the only warmth that girl experienced all day. Our next Reddit post is from Shy Girl Turned Sassy. When I was 22, my extended family, aunts, uncles, cousins, etc. began asking me why I wasn't married yet. I spent my childhood and early 20s in a fairly conservative North Indian state and people in those areas tend to be deeply misogynistic, and the only way a woman has any value in their eyes is if she's attached to a man. Her own accomplishments, talents, etc. are of no consequence. So it wasn't all that surprising when I began getting these ridiculous questions about marriage while I was still in college. I'd recently lost a lot of weight, and for the first time, I actually looked good in jeans. My weight loss seemed to cause their queries to reach whole new levels of idiocy. You see, they all assumed that the only reason I lost weight was so I could land a husband. Surely I hadn't done it for the sake of my own health and well-being, or because I wanted to look good for myself. That would be preposterous. My friend, about whom you've read in previous posts, was friends with a matchmaker. Matchmakers in India are these grunty middle-aged women who have nothing better to do than to go around carrying photographs and info about eligible bachelors and bachelorettes and share them with the families of young men and women who are looking to marry them off. My aunt's friend was no different. She showed my aunt a picture of some guy in his late 20s who also had a great job and was from a respectable family. Let's call this guy AJ. My aunt shared the picture and the info with my grandmother. Between the two of them, they decided that AJ, whom i never met before, would be the perfect match for me. Keep in mind that neither I nor my dad had any inkling of what was going on. One afternoon, I think it was Sunday, my aunt came over when I wasn't home. She told my dad to, Get your daughter dressed up and pretty. Because she'd promised me to a guy and his parents were coming over to see me that very evening. The tone in which she spoke made it sound like she'd done me and my dad a big favor. My dad was shocked and asked what the hell she was talking about. She told him that she'd taken it upon herself to find a groom for me, without my knowledge or consent, and taken some of the burden off his shoulders, and that their mother, my grandmother, had approved of this match. My dad told her that he would have to speak to me first and whether the guy's parents can come over or not depends on what I have to say about this. 
The little grunt actually tried to convince my dad that my consent wasn't necessary and that as elders they had every right to make this decision for me, but my dad wasn't having it. When I came home a few hours later, my aunt greeted me with a hug. This was enough to send red flags flying everywhere. I asked her what was going on and she gleefully told me what she'd done and how her proposition had my grandmother's blessings. I told her to shove it up her butt and that I was in no mood to have an arranged marriage. Not then, not ever. She looked shocked and asked how I could say such a thing after all the trouble she's been through in order to find such a wonderful young man for me. I decided to get dirty. I told her if the wonderful young man is making her so wet, why doesn't she go marry him? My dad heard this and told me to watch my language. I told him I would if this jerk knew her place and knew not to poke her nose where it doesn't belong. My grandmother heard the commotion from her room and called out to my dad. She began telling him about how she had seen the guy's picture and the matchmaker had told them all about his family and how a match like this may not come along again. My dad told her that he would never force his daughter to marry if she doesn't want to. My stepmom said the same. I merely told her that she was insane and belongs in a lunatic asylum. This, of course, caused both Grand Monster and Crazy Aunt to fake cry and go on and on about how my dad doesn't trust them to make the right decision for his daughter, and that they were family, and family has the right to make decisions for each other. What the actual F? I wasn't going to budge, however, and told them I wasn't going to meet the guy or his parents, and my aunt had better cancel the meeting if she knows what's good for her. My aunt left our house grumbling. But the drama was far from over. My grand monster, in order to emotionally blackmail my dad into agreeing to the match, with or without my consent, stopped eating. Anytime food was brought to her, she would break into crocodile tears and whine about how my dad was dishonoring her wishes. As she was diabetic, her health began to deteriorate. My dad was scared. One evening, he and my stepmom sat me down and asked if I would consider the proposal and just have a meeting with AJ's family. I was still adamant and said no. My aunt came over and said she had great news. As AJ's parents were still interested in meeting me and they would allow me to study and have a career after I married their son. I asked her what part of the word no did she not understand the last time we spoke and who the F do AJ's parents think they are to allow me to do anything? My aunt once again flew into an impotent rage and asked how I could be so selfish. How I could disobey my family like this and some other BS about how marriage is a union between families and not just individuals. And how in her days, girls were married off as soon as they reached adulthood whether they liked it or not. I let her go on for some time as her little hissy fit was quite amusing to me. After she had exhausted herself, I told her that if she, Grand Monster, or even my parents even tried to force me into this marriage, I was going to cut my wrists. And if I survived, the cops would know that I did it because I was being forced to marry against my will, and all involved would be in a world of trouble. Even if I died, I would leave behind enough evidence in the form of emails to all my friends and college professors detailing how I was being mentally tortured so I could be forced into this marriage. Both outcomes would result in all of them in deep legal trouble. I even showed them the email I had already written. All I had to do was send it. And if any of them even think of locking me up and taking away my phone, laptop, etc., they should remember that my vocal cords still work and I would gather the entire neighborhood with my screams and cops would surely be called. As I spoke, my aunt's eyes kept getting wider and wider. She was in shock, but she knew me well enough to know that I was very capable of doing all this. She left quietly. Grand Monster must have heard every word because her hunger strike came to an end. My aunt never tried to look for a match for me again. Later, my dad told me that he was only asking me to think about the match and that he would never force me to do something I didn't want to do. I told him I knew that and assured him that my threats were only meant to scare my aunt. And they worked. Down in the comments, there are tons of stories from other people who live in India who explain that they also have family members who tried to get them in an arranged marriage. So apparently this type of entitled parent attitude is pretty common in India. Our next Reddit post is from Black Panda. My mother has terminal cancer and due to financial constraints, she decided to move in with me and my family. As soon as my mother arrived here, we visited my lawyer and began and completed her will and power of attorney. 
She doesn't want life support or anything and has to do not resuscitate. My aunt, my mom's sister, decided to call me and it got interesting. Hi, OP. I wanted to see how your mother's doing because she doesn't tell me anything. She's good, same as always. Well, have you two discussed her dying wishes? Yes, it's all taken care of. What is it that you need? Well, when the time comes, can you call me so I can get a flight to be with her when she passes? When the time comes, I'll notify everyone. Okay, well, make sure you do everything you can do so I can be with her. What do you mean? Like, life support? She has a do not resuscitate and doesn't want that. But as soon as it's close, I'll make phone calls. Hopefully everyone can make it. I don't think you understand me. If she's passing, you need to put her on life support so I can be with her. Your power of attorney, and when she's in that state, she won't know the difference. I'm dumbfounded by what she said. Um, no, that's not how it works. It's already on file with the hospital and doctors, signed and legalized. Even if I wanted to, I can't. You're selfish! I'm pretty sure you don't understand how this works, but it's okay. We'll talk when it comes close to that time. You're the most selfish, arrogant human being I've ever met. You have no idea how much I'm suffering. You aren't suffering and you need to stop. My mother has terminal cancer. She's living in a constant state of pain. You live in your home, which is now paid off, with one of your sons and his girlfriend and their three kids. You were using my mother's home as your home. You took her benefits for food and used it for yourself and your family. You drove her car for two years and never had to pay for anything. It doesn't matter if I could pay her property taxes and bills. She wanted to come here to be with me and my family. She wanted a closer bond with her granddaughter before she dies. She's choosing how she dies and where she wants to be buried. Why are you calling me anyway? I am recording this conversation and I'll use it as proof that you're trying to kill her for the insurance money. The fact that you won't keep her alive is murder. I hung up on her before she went full crazy like always. I had her on speaker this entire time and my mom listened to the entire conversation. My mother is in shock and began crying because my mother and I always had a rough relationship due to my aunt always lying about me. This is where it gets good. My aunt calls my mother sobbing, and I mean sobbing, and begins telling her all types of lies about this conversation. My mother quietly listened to the blatant lies and ended the conversation like this. Aunt, I was listening the whole time that OP had you on speaker. I know everything. It's a shame that you caused so much destruction between my only child and I for so long. I'm glad that at the end of all this, he still took me in. I've done so much for you and now I see it's just jealousy because it wasn't all about you. When I die, I don't want you to come to his home. You can be at my burial in Mexico, but don't come here. He doesn't want you here and he's too kind and empathetic to my disease to tell you no. But I'm going to say no. I'm sorry that this will be our last conversation we'll ever have. My mother hung up and blocked her number. The greatest part of all this, my mother said all this to her while drinking her morning coffee and eating her toast without a beat. Our next Reddit post is from Sumo Ninja. We had a couple hundred cars and other motor vehicles stored at any given time. The neighborhood kids, older teens, some were actually adults, liked to break in and steal personal items left in the cars, wallets, radios, GPS units, etc. If they stole the radio out of the dash, they'd rip the dash apart, so we'd have to replace the radio and repair the dash. It would be a very expensive repair. We had a six foot high fence topped with razor wire and an alarm. They'd find ways over it. Usually they'd throw a mattress on the razor wire and hop over using a car. To protect ourselves, we put up an electric fence inside our security fence, the one topped with the razor wire. The electric fence was six feet inside the outer fence. Neighborhood parents decided they were up in arms about our complete disregard for their little f trophies. The local councilman and police lieutenant came to me asking what we could do to calm the neighbors. Mind you, the electric fence was installed with the blessing of the local government, fully permitted and licensed. I told the politician, he was a real mouthpiece, that we would not be disarming or removing the fence. He told me that neighbors were very, very concerned for their children. I asked him which neighbors were most vocal. He told me. 
I looked at the cop and told him those were the kids to look into when there were burglaries and thefts in the area. The politician asked why. I told him the parents most worried about their kids were the ones that had kids they knew were climbing the other fence and stealing and vandalizing cars. Then I took them to show the fence. You would seriously think the councilman would have taken a closer look at the setup, but he only looked at the big yellow high voltage warning signs. When we got to the storage facility, the cop laughed. The councilman looked like he walked in on his wife in bed with his best friend. He was mad and surprised at the same time. They looked at the setup. The electric fence was two full steps inside the property. There was no way to accidentally contact it from the sidewalk. The only way to get to it would be to climb the outer security fence. The kids weren't allowed in there ever under any circumstances. It didn't take long for the councilman to learn that he had been played by the neighbors. The cop was fairly entertained. He actually laughed. Then the cop said something politically correct and left. I looked at the cop and we talked about the families that were really upset about the fence. They outed themselves as the suspects in a number of crimes. One of the older kids would shoot someone about two years later. He would actually get caught on a stolen ATV from our other location. The cop chuckled and said, now I have to figure out what to say to the parents of these crooks. I said tell them I want to know if they prefer their delinquents regular or extra crispy. I'd love to know what argument these entitled parents used. How dare you threaten my children when they were stealing from your property. If anything happens to my precious babies while they're committing felonies, I'll sue. That was r slash entitled parents and if you like this video then please let me know by hitting that like button because it really helps my channel out.